Hey guys, I'm Brian and I'm Garrison, Authentic Man Program. So we're going to talk about what makes for a great date, especially the first dates. Um, one of the things about having a great first date is always about the connection. You know, it's like it doesn't really matter what you do as long as the connection is really good. And of course that comes from being present, being in appreciation of the woman you're with, really knowing your integrity. Now, those are the first three levels of the hierarchy that are really important. And what I'm going to share with you are some ways that you can really tap into that. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my first, one of the first things is this game that I created a few years ago called... Why don't you tell me? I want, to, I want you to talk to me. All right. Anything. You guys hang out. I'm just going to tell Brian about this and uh, just listen in. So, I, don't, I think I told you about this game before. It's called Fascination. Okay. And what it is, is I just ask her, so tell me something that you're fascinated by. Mm -hmm. Tell me one mm -hmm. thing that just fascinates you. And maybe she'd say, like, babies fascinate me. Mm -hmm. I would say, well, what, what about babies fascinates you so much? Mm -hmm. like, really, like, paint me a picture of it. Yeah. And she would say, oh, I don't know. Like, you know, there's that, um, that whole phase of development where babies are just fascinated by their own hands. And they're just mm -hmm. like, wow, what am I? What <laughs> is this? You know? That is a great yeah. point in babies. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's cool. Yeah. And me listening really just letting go of, hey, where I'm going to take this from here, or where I want to go, or what my intentions are for the date, just mm -hmm. really being with her and getting, like, wow, that is fascinating. Mm -hmm. And really... Just going on the ride yeah, with her. really going on the ride with her and really deepening into the experience of, so, what is going on there? Mm -hmm. Like, do you remember for yourself what your experience was when you mm -hmm. were like, whoa, what am I? What mm -hmm. is this? Am I making this stuff move? Just having that conversation. But the agreement of the game is that you can't spend more than five minutes talking about any one thing. Okay. And then I ask her, so ask me, what's something that fascinates me? And I don't have it planned out at all. I have no idea what I'm going to say uh -huh. because I just want to come to it in the moment. So she'd say, what uh -huh. fascinates me? And I'd be like, well, the ocean fascinates me. Uh -huh. It's like the biggest body of anything on the entire planet. We don't even know how deep it goes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it amazes me. And it's great to even get vulnerable, because I realize the ocean, it fascinates me, but at the same time, it scares me. Yeah. It's so dark and deep and mysterious, and it's just, like, I remember we did a corporate retreat a few years ago, mm -hmm. where we took all of uh, Authentic SF and AMP to Hawaii. Yeah. What, what was the... What Hawaii? We, we no, Hawaii? we did uh, the Big Island. The Big Island. It, yeah. was, it wasn't Oahu. No. The big, they just call it the Big Island. It was the big one. And we did this thing where, and this would probably actually be a part of my story about what fascinates me. Right. So we went snorkeling. All of us went snorkeling. We're like swimming with dolphins. It was really cool. And the captain of the ship did this one thing where he took us three miles off the coast. And he said, okay, you see those mountains out there in the distance off on the land? Those mountains are three miles away from here. And as far as those mountains are away from here is as deep as the water is here. And it was just this, I remember that. It, yeah, it was just this feeling of like, oh my God, the water is that deep. Like, I couldn't even comprehend how incredibly deep that was. Mm -hmm. And so what we did together was that everybody at Authentic, Authentic SF, all the guys, all the women, we decided we were going to go skinny dipping, snorkeling. We jump in, and what we decided to do is how much can we just let go mm -hmm. into that depth, into mm -hmm. that emptiness? And it was, it was so humbling and intimidating mm -hmm. and vulnerable. and mm -hmm. It was just a, an amazing experience mm -hmm. in really getting the depth and the power and the enormousness. I remember putting on the goggles and just looking into the darkness. Like yeah. It was like you could see shafts of light coming from the sun down through the blue water and then just kept going. Oh, yeah. And I remember, I remember thinking to myself, how deep can I just... I'm up here at the surface, swimming around with everybody else. How deep can I swim down? Mm -hmm. And I could literally get like 10 feet before I could literally feel just like the pressure, the water mm -hmm. pressure, like squishing my head. I mean, 10 feet out of three miles. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine what it's like all the way down there with all that mm -hmm. water weight. And there was like all these sort of like sparkle, sparkling, glittering oh, yeah. beams that just sort of disappeared into the darkness. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. So, and of course it was great to see the authentic SF women swimming around naked. It's always a beautiful thing. So, that was, that, that was a great experience. 
And so we're in our conversation, mm -hmm. and we're talking about what fascinates you. And I just shared this amazing description of what fascinated me. And Brian was just really right there with me about, like, wow, like bringing it forward. Tell me more about that. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I get to have this experience of something that I just really enjoy and really fascinated me, and that someone else is really getting it with me. One thing I want to add is what freaking amazes me about women is that they are so sensitive um, to reliving experiences. Like, right. I can tell a woman, like, what I want to do with her, for example, or what I'd like to do, and sometimes that's a great way to bring things up, the energy up on a first date. Like, wow, if we weren't in this cafe right now, I would be, you oh, know, wow. dot, dot, dot. Um, and just describing in detail. And it's so funny because... For me, I, I imagine when I imagine things, it's just kind of like a vague, hazy idea of things. But for most women, when they imagine things, like their body goes through a, like physiological responses. Mm -hmm. Like I was on the phone with a woman, and I said, I said, um, I said, um, I'm looking forward to curling up with you tonight. You know? Right. And she said, "Wow, I I feel tingly." Like she, her whole body just imagined curling up with me in that moment and she was reliving that experience and so when I'm on a date I, I'm thinking about the questions I ask going to take her on a ride mm. or if she says you know if I was playing this game fascinations I would pick a fascination that's going to create an exhilarating experience for her mm. if I'm sharing about it right well that's the thing if it ex if it's gonna create an, ex an exhilarating experience for her yeah. it means that you're picking something that is exhilarating for you that's and true. that's and that's how yeah. you know. Cool. So let's go on to some other games. Okay. Um, one one other that I really like. I was actually just at this business conference uh, this last weekend. I met this woman who had this amazing question that blew me away, and uh, I actually used it on a date that I was on recently, and it was really cool. And she simply looked at me and she said, "So, what do you really think of yourself?" <laughs> it was like, "Oh my God, that's really vulnerable." And so her and I talked about it for a little while. I was like, that's an amazing question. Here's how I'd probably do it if I was on a date with a woman. Mm -hmm. I would say, here's a game. It's a simple game. It's one question. And it's got two parts. So the first part is the question. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you really think of yourself? Mm -hmm. And the second part is that I'm going to go first. Hmm. So now what, what I've done is I've created the frame of here's where, here's where I want to go with you. Mm -hmm. And... I'm going to go there first. Mm -hmm. So then I just start to say, well, damn. Well, here's what I think of myself. And make it really vulnerable and really real and really honest mm -hmm. and really in integrity, like is what I'm saying the truth. Mm -hmm. And all the pretty parts and all the, the vulnerable parts, is it the truth? And then once I've gone and I've gone to whatever the deepest level that I can, she's going to know, okay, it's safe to go there. It's safe to go to at least that level if or match it or mm -hmm. even take it further because he just showed me that he's a man who can go there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll meet you. Cool. And then the second part of that is, okay, do you want to hear what I think of you now? And then I would actually say, well, here's what I think of you. And then invite her to say, mm -hmm. what do you think of me? Mm -hmm. I mean, like just that question, taking it to that level mm -hmm. in that way, that really just opened up things in a whole new way. I would say the only improvement I could add to that, which is great by the way, would be the next step would be rather than what I think of you is what I feel when I'm with you. Oh, that's good. Because then it's, it brings it more into the body. And for me, I'm really aware of, wary of just having it be an information exchange on a date. Right. Um, I went... You know, I've been out on a date recently, and it was like, we're doing information exchange, like, oh, what do you do? What do you like about it? And I was like, okay, this is all right, but I want to take this to, um, I want to bring more immediacy yeah. to this. So there are times when I would just stop and just not pick up the threads, and we'd just hang out in that silence, and then she'd get a little shy. And then I'd point out, oh, you're, are you feeling shy? You know? uh. And so then we're playing with what's happening in the moment. And she's like, and I was like... I might even just say, go ahead and take a breath. Just write, write me here. 
to help her expand into just being able to fully be more here with me. Yeah. Like, so now I'm guiding her a little bit, and, and I, or I'll just be like, you're really cute when you're shy, you know, or I'm just pointing out what's happening in the moment. Mm -hmm. And that brings it from a sense of like, oh, here's some information I'm sharing with you, here's some information you're sharing with me, to us creating, co-creating something in the moment. Mm. That's really good. Now, what you're talking about, that's a little advanced. Mm -hmm. And that is a level that you can get to. What it means is that you're learning to be really, really present. And it also means you're really learning to appreciate what her experience is. Mm -hmm. A lot of times she'll go to a place and we'll be like, oh, she's going there. I don't, I don't want to really go there. Yeah. But the more you appreciate her experience, the easier it is to be present to her experience. And then you can just bring in your own integrity. Because what you were saying earlier about... You know, sitting there with a woman and saying, well, mm -hmm. if we weren't here right now, here's what I'd want to be doing with you. Yeah, here's like, what I want with you. It, it's yeah. vulnerable to speak that truth, and that's, that's a big mm -hmm. part of integrity, being able to say, okay, here's what I know I'm feeling attracted to or drawn to. Mm -hmm. I don't need you to want the same thing, yeah. but I'm going to share with you what I know the truth is for totally. me. And when you can do that from a place of integrity, yeah. that's attractive. So that's also part of making a really great first date. I mean, we're talking juicy, fun, yeah. fresh, mm -hmm. wild, enticing dates. Yeah, I mean, in those moments, I I'll share also the if I'm if I'm on my you know on my game, which just means being present in my body for yeah. me. Like I'll be feeling my body, and I'll feel uh, it's like we'll be tuning forks, right? And mm -hmm. I'll feel her response. So I'll feel like we'll just sit in silence, and I'll just allow that intensity to expand and then I'll just share what I'm feeling. I'm like, wow, I'm noticing like stirrings right here and I just felt my heart start beating a little faster wow. just now. Like That's just powerful. in a moment, just giving her my experience. And yeah. usually she's like, me too. Like she'll, she's usually, if, cause we're tuning forks, right? Like I'm just tuning into what's going on in her body as yeah. well. So our bodies are res, start resonating together. Totally. And it's so rare that a woman can actually have a conversation like that with a man because she's experiencing stuff yeah. like that all the time. But 99.9% .9 of the time, she can't share that with a man because he's right. not going to know what the hell she's talking about. In fact, this girl um, that I, uh, we were at that conference and the, the woman that I right. happened to meet with, she said, um, she said, wow, it feels weird being with you. She's like, normally I'm more present. She even used the word present. She's like, normally I'm the one who's more present and you're catching me because I was like, oh, you you feeling shy, oh. you know, and she's like, she's like, God, I feel exposed right now, like, yeah. I don't, but I like it, and she, she said, normally, it's cool to find a guy who actually is calling me out, rather than me doing, doing the one who's always, mm -hmm. has an eye on things more. Yeah, totally. Learning, learning how to do stuff like that separates a man from the pack, mm -hmm. so, by so many levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, other things about first dates, what, what else do we have about first dates? Well, another, um, another question that I've used in the past that mm -hmm. just came to me one day, and I love it, and this is the world premiere of me sharing this question with you. Okay. Like, I, I almost... I do, do, do. Yeah, I know. Let's get some trumpets, a little margin. Let's really hype it up. I, I'll tell you, honestly, I've, I've almost been keeping this one to myself because it's so good. I have. Like, I've never, I've never shared it before, but I'm going to share it right now. <laughs> Breaking news. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so here's, here's what it is. The question is simply, when you were a little girl, mm -hmm. and you were old enough that who you were, like your, your personality was mm -hmm. totally there, but you were still maybe a little too young to know better, like maybe between like five and eight, mm -hmm. what was something that you did that your family said, Oh, that was so you to do. That's now, a great question. It is, it is an amazing question, and I'll, and I'll explain why. So I remember asking my friend Joanne that question. Yeah. And she said, well, I remember when I was like seven, and there were homeless people in the streets, and there was people living in boxes. And I said to my mom, why do those people live in boxes? Mm -hmm. And her mom said, because that's, they don't have a home. That's their home. So she went home and decided... And she was going to take a cardboard box from the garage and put it in the backyard and live in that box for a week. <laughs> and that was something about wow. her as a kid that her family was like, that was so Joanne to do. 
Now, what's amazing about that is that who Joanne is today mm -hmm. isn't any different from that. Yeah. It's like you could literally see, here's who she is today, here's who she was as a kid. And, and she's could... still living in a box. <laughs> I drop by. I drop by on Thanksgiving it. and give her some turkey. <laughs> you can literally see. We huddle in her little box together. You can literally see like the strings between who she is now and who she was then, and you can follow them. And what's beautiful about that is that who she truly was on a mm -hmm. core level never changes. Mm -hmm. And what you'll start to find is that when you really ask this question and you ask it from a place of really wanting to know mm -hmm. and really being present to, I really want to know what that unique essence of you was, yeah. you actually see that that's really who they are mm -hmm. and that's never changed. It's great. Yeah. It's like, it's just an opportunity for people to fall in love with themselves even more deeply, I think. Like to ask that question for them to truly answer it. Like when I think about that, I'll answer it for myself. Yeah. It's like probably the most formative thing that's the Brian thing is I would be like really excited and curious and I, I would always ask my dad like, which would win, a cobra or a rattlesnake, you know? Which one's faster, a cheetah or a leopard? And I would just always want to know what's the biggest, fastest, strongest. And right. I was just so inquisitive and curious. And like, I would constantly pester my dad about during movies. And I'd be like, Dad, why did he do that thing? Dad, what's going on? Why is he, what? why did he kill that guy? You know, right. and my dad would be like, I don't know, Brian, you're watching the same movie I am. Like, <laughs> what? You know, and I'm like, yeah, but you're my dad. Like, you're, you should know. Right. But like that, there is that part of me that still is like totally. just hyper curious, really inquisitive, wants to know, wants to understand. Actually, I'm looking to like let go of more of that needing to know all the time. But yeah, that's another story. Yeah. But nonetheless, it's, it's very it's a, much. It's something that's run through my entire life. Yeah. For sure. And so just you sharing that, and you've told yeah. that story to me before. Yeah. But it's like I, I always feel like I know you deeper by getting like, mm -hmm. oh, wow. Like you yeah. can actually feel the depth and the yeah. connection with the person through asking a question like that. Cool. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. So if we were to summarize here, it seems like it's about time to wrap this, sure. wrap this puppy up. Um, a couple of things you can do is take into consideration on the first date. You know, a lot of guys give like, take her to the bowling alley or take her to a coffee shop or go for a walk on the beach. But really, the, under all that is the quality of the connection. That's what she's looking for is yeah. what are you, what kind of a visceral, somatic, bodily, emotional experience are you creating for this woman? And consider that you're sculpting a ride for her in that regard. And it might mean you decide to put, um, set up a series of little insta dates as they call them. Like you might say like, we're going to go to a coffee shop and have a rare exotic tea that I'm, that I'm fond of oh. and we're going to taste that. And then we're going to go for a walk in, to my favorite tree in Golden Gate Park. Or, um, like, for me, I would take my, like, the girl I was dating in high school, like, there was nothing to do in Missouri, and we were underage, so I just took her to the old abandoned rock quarry. <laughs> well, that, had, that yeah. had all the graffiti on the walls, totally. and the beer cans. And yeah, like, but someone, it was like a big hole in the ground. It's and, like, like someone, just, someone's old mattress, like, yeah. Yeah, we just lay on this piece of rock, and there was a, just a big hole in the ground. At nighttime, there was, like, all the crickets out, oh, and wow. it was, like, a hot summer day. That's but nice. Yeah, but um, we jumped the fence and we heard this smashing noise. And when we got back to the car, somebody smashed open the window and taken our purse out. And that was oh like our second shit. date. So maybe maybe abandoned rock quarries aren't the best place for a first date. <laughs> I don't know what the moral of them story is. I was kind of but the, myself. But I'm saying that depending on the quality of the experience you want to create, um, it, consider it from an emotional point of view. Whether it's a series of external things you're doing, you might spend time crafting the places you're going to go, or you might spend some time thinking about some questions. And uh, Mark Lewis, a friend of ours, always said, if you spent two hours or spent um, even a fraction of the time that you're going to spend on the date preparing for the date, whether it's like, I've got some good questions I want to ask that are going to take her on a ride, or you plan, you know, A and then B and then C. Those those points pay off. I also set intentions before my dates. I even may even write them down. You may think that's geeky, but for me, that takes the quality of the experience that I have, just, it skyrockets it. Setting an intention before your date is huge. And an intention simply looks like we laugh, connect, and really enjoy each other deeply. Yeah. And that's just setting like one sentence 
And all you have to do during your day is just hold that intention in your mind mm -hmm. and just relate to everything through that intention. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a really great way of deepening mm -hmm. that. Because no matter, for example, no matter where things go off in the evening, as long as you hold that intention in your mind, you keep directing yourself back to that. And that's, that's something that makes a really big difference. For setting intentions, you might also be more specific about what are the intentions you want to set in terms of something you're working on. Like, for example, if your dates end up being really platonic all the time, you might be set an intention like, I was unapologetically direct and raw about my attraction. Mm. And I was vocal in expressing that. So that, that can be something that you're, then you can go back and look like, is that something that was there? So, so to summarize, notice the emotional ride you're taking her on. Whether it's through external places or questions you're asking or stories that you're sharing. Put some forethought in the, the dates that you create, in the time you spend together, including setting intentions or spending time planning where you're going to go A and then B and then C. I think that summarizes it. That was good. And oh, then, and the fascinations game? Yeah, we got the fascinations game. We've got the... We ask something that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. What was it? So the fascination game is where you ask them, tell me something that you think is fascinating. Yeah. And then you just go back and forth. Yeah. The other game is the um, what do you really think of yourself game. Yeah. And then the third game is um, tell me about when you were young. And just watch, watch the, the video. All right, here's how you say it, right? Yeah, say <laughs> I'll, I'll just say it. Let's reiterate. Here's, here's how you say it. When you were a little girl, and you were old enough that your personality, who you were, was clearly there, mm -hmm. but you were still maybe too young to know any better, maybe between like five and eight, what's something that you did that your family would say later on that was so you to do? Mm -hmm. And instead of you, say their name. That was so Sarah to do, or that was mm -hmm. so Beth. To do, right. and it's a great way to really draw forth, like really who they are at their core. It's a really great way to get to know someone. And then the final piece that creates a sense of immediacy and spark throughout those moments, whether it's you're going from place to place or you just ask that question, is to share in the moment how you're experiencing her. Or like, right. wow, when you just shared about that childhood experience, I just saw you light up, and I felt blank in my body. And that's going to create a sense of immediacy in the moment of connection that, that you can carry throughout the course of the entire day nice. and beyond. And you know what? I want to give you guys one bonus one that I just remembered. I want to give this to you as a bonus. Great. It's called the Affinity Game. I, I, don't think you've, I don't think you know about this one. It's called the Affinity Game, and it's three questions. It's always best for you to go first because that way they get the level that you want to play at. Okay. So the first question is you ask me, mm -hmm. what's something that I don't know about you? Okay, you want me to do that? Yeah, so you asked me okay. that question. What's something I don't know about you? Um, let me see. Once I was uh, in a jellyfish fight at my beach house when I was growing up, and I got hit in the eye with a jellyfish. <laughs> and I've always had this thing about jellyfish, like they've always freaked me out. Oh. <laughs> All right, and the second question is, Tell me something that you think we agree on. So I ask you that? Yeah. Tell me something you think we agree on. I think we agree that this is an amazing, amazing time in history. It's an amazing mm -hmm. time to be alive. Okay. And then third question is, tell me something that you like about me. Uh, tell me something that you like about me. I like that... Um, You've just got this way about you that you just love to take new things on and you just mm -hmm. plow forward mm -hmm. and just, it's, it's, it's like, it's amazing. Like I find myself sort of like trying to figure all kinds of things out and do it right and you're just like, out of the way! And you just, <laughs> like, I, I, I dig that about you and I'm really, it's really cool. Yeah. Thanks. And then so what we do from there is we'd switch and now that she understands how that works, then we would switch and I would say, okay, so tell me something that I don't know about you. And because I, I set the level, she'll probably meet that level in the yeah. same way. And then we can keep doing rounds. And uh -huh. if she enjoys it, okay, next round, here's some, something you don't know about me. And I take it a level deeper. Yeah. Something I think we agree on, take it a level deeper. Mm -hmm. Something that I like about you, take it a level deeper. Cool. And it's a, fun, it's a fun way of just continuing to sort of like circle down mm -hmm. into what's real. 
and it's it's a great way of getting to know somebody. It just totally cuts through the bullshit. Yeah. And has people get really related really fast. Cool. Yeah. I would write, maybe you even want to write these down. Um, I write things down. I take notes. I put them in my Blackberry before I go out on dates and stuff like that. Like, and I might just check like, oh, I, have, I had some questions for you. Let me see what they were. And I'll, I'll pull this, I'll have them handy. I don't have to be smooth or try and remember all this stuff. So it's mm -hmm. like, tell me something I like about you. Or tell yeah. me something. Tell me, um, tell me something I don't know about you. Yeah. Tell me something you think we agree on. Yeah. Tell me something you like about me. Got it. And then you switch. Right. And you have her, you share first about those questions. Yeah. Cool. You always share I think first. it's great that you're helping direct her. You're like, okay, I want you to ask me this question mm -hmm. too. It's like setting a frame for her to just drop into. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. Um, the final piece is, um, you may want to check out, if you haven't watched the Power Presence DVD set, you should watch for the numbers game totally. um, at the end. Because that is a way of creating almost like tantric electricity with a woman. Oh, yeah. So for the numbers game, the last time I did that, I remember I was on a date with this girl and we were at the observation deck up at the De Young Museum, just hanging out talking. And I said, I've got this really cool game, let's play it. Yeah. And you'll see it on the DVDs for Power of Presence. And what happens is that she says a number and what you're learning to do is have your presence be so clear and sharp that you can literally say the numbers with her at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. And I remember, we hadn't even kissed yet. And every time she would say a number, and I was right there saying the number with her, mm -hmm. every single time, her eyes would just get bigger and bigger. And it got to the point where she didn't want to stop kissing me. Like, I, every time I... thought I, you were playing the numbers game. It was the numbers start game. Kissing? Every time I would get the number right, uh -huh. she would just like, ah. Oh. And it was like two oppositely charged magnets just just pulled together. <laughs> it was it was hilarious. Cool. Yeah, I think that's a lot for you guys to play with. Um, post up if you're on the Inner Circle forum. Uh, tell us what you think of this and uh, any ideas you have for a great first date. Maybe we'll put those in the next newsletter. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. It was fun.